Okay, so we're going to be using calculators today because we're going to be solving equations with decimals and we're also going to have to remember our positive and negative rules. I want you to notice on our contract, and I'm going to zoom in here, we went from 310 and now we're going back to 35. Both 35 and 311 in your book are about solving equations. Okay. 3.5 is solving equations with decimals, and that's what we're going to be working on today. Tomorrow we'll get into solving equations with fractions. And go ahead and take a moment to write the problems down on here. Try to autofocus that a little better. And then set your contract aside. Don't worry about 3.11, we'll work on that tomorrow. And before we start our work today, there's a couple of things I want you guys to think about. Turn to page 11 in your spiral. Do you guys see what we drew on page 11? What's at the top of the page here? A scale. We drew this way back when we were reviewing how to solve equations with just whole numbers. And we wrote in here that when solving equations, we need to keep both sides equal. So yesterday we were using this tool to help us solve some problems. And I wanna show you that for instance, this problem here, x plus 5 equals 11 could be represented with the same tools we were using yesterday. I don't have an 11 cube, so I'm using a 10 and a 1. Do you guys see what I did there? Mm -hmm. And we don't have an x on both sides, so this x has to stay. What would we use to try to solve this? Yeah, and when we're talking about takeaway, we're talking about subtraction, aren't we? So again, if you look up above the board here, or you have this table in your notes as well on page 11, this is x and 5. And remember yesterday we talked about the symbol for and in math is plus. So x plus 5, the opposite of that is subtraction. So we would take away the 5. And if I take 5 away from 11, we end up with six, right? That's what we did here on paper. Do you guys see that's the same action that we were practicing yesterday with the manipulatives? Yeah. Okay, so keeping in mind that idea that when we're solving equations, we're looking to simplify it so we can solve for the variable. We wanna keep that idea of a scale in mind. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And then this table is really important. If I see addition in the problem, I'm going to use subtraction to solve it. If I see subtraction, what are we going to use? And the same goes for multiplication and division. We call these inverse operations. Inverse meaning the opposite. So if I see multiplication, I'm going to use division to solve. Okay? So with that in mind, let's work on a few problems in our book together. Only now we're dealing with decimals. In grading the last set of contracts, I noticed a lot of people are getting out of the habit of putting on a good heading. It's very challenging for me to see what your work is if I have to dig through it to find out what the assignment was. So right now let's take the time to put your full heading on. That includes your name. Today's date is the 16th your class period, and the really important part besides your name is 3-5 is the assignment we're doing. Okay, 
And let's go ahead and put our objective across the top. Let's make it an I can statement. I can solve one step equations with decimals. Again, as I told you guys yesterday when you were working with me at the back table, you were really solving two step equations there. That's the end of seventh grade math, the beginning of eighth. Today's problems are less steps. They're just a little bit more challenging because instead of using whole numbers, we're going to be working with decimals. Okay, so I'm going to try to zoom in on the book so that we can have some problems in front of you and solve them together. And we're going to start here with number one. So if you could write this down as well. W minus 5.8 equals 1.2. It's actually challenging for me to write on the book, so I'm going to move it aside and I'll move it back when we work on the word problem together, okay? Let's work on number one. What do we see here? Subtraction. So what are we going to do? Addition. So we're going to add the 5.8 to both sides of the equation. Remember that idea of a scale? Our center point is this equal sign. We need to balance it by doing the same thing on both sides. If I have negative 5.8, remember all subtractions really are negatives, and I add 5.8, what happens? You get a zero. They cancel out, right? What's left on this side of the equation? W. The W. Bring our equal sign down. And we have 1.2 plus 5.8. I want us to do this by hand, and then you can use your calculator to check. Lining up the decimal, remember those rules now that we're back to adding with decimals. 2 plus 8 is 10. We're going to carry the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Plus 5 is 7. And bring down the decimal. We can even rewrite this as W equals 7. 7 plus 0 is the same thing as a whole 7. Okay, number 2 in our book is X plus 9.15 equals 17. What do we see here? So what are we going to use? I see addition. I use subtraction. I'm going to subtract that 9 and 15 hundredths from both sides. Notice on the right side that 17 doesn't have a decimal. It's invisible right now, isn't it? So we're going to make it visible. We're going to put it here. And we need to put a couple of zeros as placeholders. On the left side of the equation, everything goes away except for the x. And on the right side, we need to subtract 9 and 15 hundredths from 17. So we're going to borrow from the 7 and make this 6. And it, this becomes 10. We have to borrow again, don't we? Let's change this to a 9. So this is now the 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 9 minus 1 is? Perfect. Bring down our decimal. And 16 minus 9 is 7. So I hope you guys see this is very similar to what we were doing with one-step equations before. We just do the opposite. We're lining up our decimals because we're working with adding and subtracting decimals. 
But if you notice, I didn't say I can add and subtract one-step equations. What did we say up here? Solve. Solve. So we're also going to be doing some problems, like number five, where we have division and multiplication. And the book has B divided by 1.4 equals 3.6. I see division, so we're going to do multiplication, right? And we're going to multiply by the number that's the divisor, the number that's dividing from the B. So we're going to multiply 1.4 on both sides. And this is where you're going to be happy with me because I'm going to let you use your calculator. Okay, so go ahead and pull it over and enter it, being really careful that you get your decimals in there. What does B equal? 5 and 4 hundredths. Because you have your calculator, this is a real quick check. I can take that number that showed up in my calculator and think, well, if I put it in that place for B and I divide the 1.4 from it, do I get 3.6? Okay, because we're working with some positive and negatives and some decimals, feel free, use your calculator to check. I would like you to hand, add, and subtract today. For the division and multiplication, use your calculator, but do it both ways. Make sure you've entered things correctly. Okay, let's try another example together. I'm going to do number eight from our book, which is seven and five tenths is equal to five y. Five y is multiplication, so what are we going to do to solve? We're going to divide, and we're going to divide by the number that's with the variable. Again, go ahead and use your calculator. When I divided, I got 1 and 5 tenths. I'm going to take that and multiply it times 5 to check myself and I do get 7.5 so I know that I entered things in my calculator correctly. Okay. And in your work today you're going to have a couple of word problems. Let me put this under here in Zoom so we can look at number 9. It's a good thing that's just after breakfast and nobody's really hungry, I hope. The question's about food. So Jeff bought a sandwich and a salad for lunch. His total bill was $7.10. The salad cost $2.85. How much did the sandwich cost? I want you to really look at that and see where is some language in this that lets us know how to set this to problem up. What's one word you see? Total. Yes, total. Total tells us that there's an equal sign there is, doesn't it? His total bill was what? Okay. What did he buy? A sandwich and a salad. So let's set this up using some words. Number nine. He has a sandwich plus a salad and how much does it equal? Seven dollars and ten cents. Now we have a little bit more information in our problem, don't we? What does it tell us here? The salad costs $2.85. So in place of the salad, I'm going to say $2.85 equals 
$7.10. I don't really like using S because my S's always kind of look like fives. So I'm going to say that X equals sandwich here. And I can set up my equation now by putting an X in the place where the sandwich was. We have our sandwich plus our salad and this is our total. Give me a thumbs up if you feel pretty comfortable with setting this problem up. Use the words to help you find your equation, right? Now we have addition here, how are we going to solve it? If we subtract $2.85 from both sides, is that going to tell us the cost of the sandwich? Yes. It is. Let's try doing it without a calculator. I'm going to have to borrow from here for this. 10 minus 5 is 5. I have to borrow from here for this. 10 minus 8 is 2. I'm going to bring down my decimal. 6 minus 2 is 4. And now I know that the sandwich is $4.25 and you can use your calculator to check. Does $4.25 plus $2.85 equal $7.10? It does. The calculator is not going to put the point one zero. it's just going to put point one. but we can think about this as money and we would put in a zero as our placeholder for our penny spot, right? So with that, I think you guys are ready to try a few problems. Keep in mind that idea of a scale. Whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Keep in mind the idea of inverse operations. If we see addition, we do subtraction. If we see multiplication, we do division. Okay, And I want you to try these few problems on the same paper we started draw a line underneath our work so that starting with number 10 it's your work any questions come and find me if you get stuck and let's go ahead and begin